was the most dickish way in which a friend showed you that you're not as close as you thought, part six, kick back and enjoy the ride. If you dig what you see, hit that subscribe button and share the love for Thread Tonic. Account one. I have been friends with this girl for about 13 years. We went through high school together and even managed to be friends as adults. Things got a little weird when my high school BF broke up because he wanted to ask her out. I was cool with it, though, because it was freaking high school. She never talked about the time they spend together, and I never ask because she avoids talking about it so hard. One day she calls me and tells me she needs like $800 because of some medical issues her family is having. I tell her I don't have that, but I did manage to scrape up $400 within a day to give her. I haven't heard from her since. Account 2. My childhood best friend in Russia was a girl. Our families were very close. Moms and dads actually worked with each other. We were in the same class from kindergarten till sixth grade. We spent most of our time playing outside or at our houses together. Most holidays we spent together, I moved away about 11 years ago. When I went back to Russia to visit my grandparents in my hometown about five years ago, we had dinner with her family, but she made some bullshit excuse about having to babysit and literally left after not saying more than a sentence. About three years ago, I went to visit again. She didn't even try to see me. She was gone when we went to have dinner at her family's house. She became incredibly gorgeous. Blonde, athletic, nice tits. About two years ago, my mom told me she got knocked up and they were going to shotgun wed her. When I saw the wedding pictures, she looked so gorgeous, I felt like I had missed out on a great girl. It actually depressed me a little bit. About a year ago, I stumbled on a porn video with her in it. It was definitely her because I recognized the voice and her face. TLDR best childhood friend didn't want to even talk to me. Then she got knocked up and I found her in a porn video. Account 3. My friend started off by stealing a game console of mine and after a year he says, Hey, I'll pay you back. Want to go to this concert? I'll get you a ticket and we'll be square, right? So I agree. And he gets the tickets. He then sold mine for weed telling me he didn't have the tickets anymore right before we were supposed to leave. Account 4. When I was in second grade, I sat with my best friend on the school bus. For some reason, we were talking about Hitler, and I said Schittler. He told on me, and we weren't allowed to sit together anymore. We were still friends, but I think he hated me and was a Nazi. Account 5. Back in high school, I had an end-of-the-year art project that was worth 30% of my mark. There were three parts to this project, two of which were already done. The third part I was waiting on a friend to help me with. For this part of the project, I wanted my friend to help me compose a beat made strictly from noises heard from my room, clock ticking, fan whirling, etc. The plan was he was to make the beat, I was going to rap over it, and I was going to film a video, all of it connecting to the idea of writer's block. I had everything planned a month before, from the video to the lyrics, all I needed was the beat. I asked him a month before if he could help, and he was enthusiastic about it. Two weeks pass. I ask him about the beat, and he says he's working it. Another week passes. Still nothing heard from him. Monday comes around. The project is due on Friday. I get to school in the morning, and I ask him about the beat. He says, fuck, man. I don't want to do it anymore. I remind him that he agreed, and that this is part of my final mark, and not some stupid little assignment I can fuck off, and he says... Yay, but I don't want to do it. We get into an argument, and he reams me out in front of everyone, telling me shit like not to yell at him and that I'm being a bitch and gets everyone on his side convinced that I'm the asshole in this situation. I tell him to go fuck himself and stop talking to him for the rest of the week, last week of school. I had to rush a half-assed CD carving idea that I had from months back in an attempt to still complete the project. That part of the project got a barely passing mark while the other two were above 90%. I'm glad I'm not friends with him or the old crew no more. If he couldn't help me with something he agreed to, am I supposed to expect him to help me when I really need it? Account 6. I was in my senior year of high school and had my first real boyfriend. I had really strong feelings for him and ended up going all the way with him after four months of dating. At about five months of dating, I introduced one of my good friends to my boyfriend and my boyfriend's good friend. The four of us started hanging out religiously, doing all sorts of shenanigans together. At about six months into my relationship with my boyfriend, he asked if he could hang out with my friend. 
Since prom was coming up, I said it was fine thinking he was going to ask her for tips about how to ask me. I think you all see what's coming. Long story short, I had to ask my own boyfriend to prom because he forgot. He and his best friend started hanging out with my friend religiously. Without me. My boyfriend and her started hanging out alone more often. I asked him to stop hanging out with her so much. So he dumped me at eight months. A week later, guess who was now officially a couple? Fuck you all. You made me bitter and hostile towards my close friends and guys for months. Account 7. Had his wife, who worked at the credit union I banked at, snoop on my account daily to see how much money I was making at the company we both worked at. I also found out that whenever my name would come up for a promotion or management position, it was his brother's company, he would talk me down and say I wasn't ready for it. I found out only after I quit that he was the reason I saw zero upward movement over two years. Account 8. Once upon a time in college, I fell for this girl who was in my math class. She had quite an abusive childhood, being physically abused by her father and sexually abused by her stepfather. I tried my best to help care for her and treat her like a normal human being. We actually had a pretty normal relationship for a few months. Over Christmas break, I lived off campus and she was an RA so wouldn't have housing. I figured one month with her on board in my big empty house, roommates left for home, wouldn't be the worst. Better than sending her home to be with her messed up family. All was peachy. We had a cute little Christmas celebration in the works. First day of the new semester, radio silence. She tries to alienate my friends in class from me, but they don't really buy the story. She fesses up she likes one of my friends and not me. Realizing life's short, I tell her best of luck. New guy wants nothing to do with her. She spends the next three years calling, texting, emailing, and sending me pictures of my apartment door. I had the misfortune of starting my career in the same town she went to grad school. Eventually, her and her family got into trouble for personal and business tax evasion. It was at that time I remembered before the end of our good times, she didn't file taxes ever because she didn't make any money. Apparently, it was genetic. TLDR, girl I was seeing used me to the point where she wouldn't need me anymore and then dropped me like a sack of potatoes. Stalked me for a bit and then got busted for tax evasion. Account 9. My childhood best and only. I was a dork friend and me reconnected. She was having some rough times, needed a place to stay. I talked to my then roommate, male, and decided she could crash on our couch for a month or two, me paying her one-third plus my one-third, of the rent, utilities, and food. We talk so much the first few nights, she makes me realize that I'm head over heels for my roommate. My first love. So, less than a week after she arrives, she goes to my bedroom to put on a movie to give the two of us some alone time in the living room. She calls me in because she can't figure out how to work the VCR. I go in, set it up for her, and have to watch the opening of a really funny movie. Said roommate joins us and we end up sitting on my bed watching it. He ends up fingering her beside me on my bed. Dick move as a roomie, death move as a best friend. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Rage boils over so I take my dog and just leave. I'm gone for two days. No contact with either of them. I had to cool off or I would have hurt her. I come back, she's apologizing and crying. I kick her ass out. Then I have to explain to my roomie why she's leaving. He apologized as well. So years down the road, I've forgiven her. Dumb ass me wasn't quite jaded yet, and she's living a few hours away. She sets me up on a date with a good buddy of hers who lives near me. She proceeds to tell him that I'm a nympho when in a committed relationship. Hell yeah, but I don't fuck randoms. Long story short, he rapes me. On her FB, she's still friends with him, knowing what he did to me. He admitted it all, too, although he called it a misunderstanding. Yeah. I said no. You thought I meant yes. Big fucking misunderstanding. Now I'm nicely jaded and don't speak to her anymore. TLDR, childhood BFF, fooled around with my first love beside me on my bed, then set me up with a friend of hers that raped me. Account 10. Maybe I'll sound a little depressed, but I recently found out I don't have any girlfriends. My former friends and I had been a little group since the 7th grade, almost 12 years now, and we would always go everywhere together. One of those girls... We were 11 girls, was my former best friend, and we went through a lot together. I was there for her when her sisters beat the crap out of her. I would stand for her when guys talked trash about her. I was there for her in depressions. I was there taking care of her when she got insanely drunk. 
I went to pick her up when she decided it was a good idea to jump into some stranger's car she had met in a bar and drive with him down the highway. I was always there. Then, back in 2005, I had a boyfriend and were together for two years until we broke up in August 2007, but stopped going out until I found out he was cheating on me with some random girl in early 2008. As any girl would do, I went to my best friend to tell her everything. I acted as I would have always acted with her, and then I find out second-handed by some other not-really-close friend that my best friend was dating my former boyfriend, and she was the random girl my boyfriend cheated with. I tried talking to her, telling her how much it hurt seeing him around and that I was not feeling comfortable with that. Then she started talking shit about me and about everything I ever told her to our other friends. At the end, I was an evil bitch because I disapproved of that relationship. The rest of the girls sided with her except three of them who are still my friends and saw the wrongfulness in the whole situation and they started trying to trash me with all of our other random friends. Anyway, this was really a strange time in my life because we were no longer high schoolers to begin with. My boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend. My best friend turned the thing around saying I was a whore and a bitch. And I have to say I have never fully understood the whole situation. When all this happened and I told her I was not comfortable having him around all the time, I just ditched. I mean, I wasn't going to hang around watching them try to hurt me. So, out of a group of 11 friends, we're split into a tiny group of four Redditors and a group of seven cunts. All because some girl rather have a used dick than a true friend. As an update, earlier this year she called me because she wanted us to be like we used to. I told her she was just some random stranger to me. Account 11. Had a buddy I knew since we were really little. Our families still do stuff together, but I didn't see him until I was about 16, 17, different schools, etc. We started hanging out, smoking trees, making music together, going to parties and whatnot. His parents are pretty rich, but always treated him like shit, so I would feed him and give him rides and whatever. One year, I got tickets for a comedy show for my birthday, and I called him up if he wanted to go with me. He kept saying like he'd love to, but that he had to shovel some sand in his dad's garden and wouldn't be finished for a while. So dumbass that I am, I drove over to his house prepared to help him finish early so we could go. I arrive and his mom tells me that he just took off with his friends to go to a street festival in the next town, 15-20 minutes on foot. I drive to the next town and funny enough, there he is with his clique of bros, all weird-ass thug urban gangsters, walking towards the festival. I take a turn literally two feet in front of him and nearly run him over. He doesn't even notice. Needless to say, I didn't go to the comedy show. I spent my birthday present driving around in the car crying about what an asshole he was and how I fell for it. Didn't speak to him until about a year after that when I had cleaned up my act and just wanted to see how he was doing. I drove over to his house and he's snorting coke with two petty criminals literally ten feet across the hall from his dad, owner of a private security company. I stuck around for about ten minutes and then made some reason up I had to go. He later married a chick he met while doing coke, had a kid with her, and now lives in a permanent rehab facility. Never regretted cutting ties with him, and whenever my parents try to tell me about him, I just shrug my shoulders and go, so fucking what? Still hurts, though. Actually, I could have known for a while, I guess, since whenever he was at my house, he would ask me for food and ingest incredible amounts of my candy and other snacks. Then one day we were at his house having a little tree smoking session and I asked him if he had anything to eat. He said, no nah, man, we've got nothing. About half an hour later I went into the basement to grab some drinks he had put in the freezer and look what's here. Stuffed full of pizzas and fries and whatever you can imagine, but apparently I wasn't good enough of a friend to offer me anything. I confronted him, but he made some shit up that he was not allowed to eat any of the food in his own house. Lying bastard, rot in hell. Count 12. Basically, I had no friends growing up, so I took these especially rough. One kid I was friends with for a few years in elementary school, out of the blue was telling me shit like how at least his brother could talk. My brother is severely mentally handicapped. He has tuberous sclerosis, which results in a host of secondary conditions like autism and epilepsy, and he's nonverbal. Yeah, that sucked. Later, when I was in high school, a guy I'd been friends with since I was a little kid basically just stopped returning my calls. My mother said she saw his dad at some point, and he made some super sarcastic comment about being surprised I didn't go to Harvard or something like that. People suck. Account 13. 
I was in a band with some friends a while back. During Christmas of one year, my sister and I got $150 each from our mom. We immediately decided that we'd use the money to buy our mother a plane ticket back to her home state to see her dad, whose health is deteriorating from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. I was really excited about the plan we had come up with, because my mom is the type of person who works hard and deserves a break like this once in a while, so I told a couple of my bandmates, one of which was living with me at the time, and then put the money in my wallet. The next day, I had a trip planned to go to Gatlinburg with a youth group, and I couldn't find my wallet anywhere. I told my mom that I couldn't find it, and the money she gave me the day before was in it, which really upset me because I wasn't going to be able to fulfill the plan my sister and I had come up with. I still hadn't found my wallet for several months until one day I was hanging out with Roy, one of my bandmates at my house that night, who I had gotten really close since then, when his brother called. He said he found my wallet while he was cleaning out his brother's room. I assumed the worst at first, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt and decided that it was possible that I could have accidentally left my wallet over there at some point. We rode over there together. The entire time he was acting really awkward and strange when I would bring up that I was happy to have my wallet back. When we got there, surprise, there was no money in my wallet. He also took a bunch of my clothes and broke both of my Xbox 360 headsets. TLDR, friend stole Christmas money from me that I was going to spend on something really important. Account 14. My roommates told me that they're not renewing the lease and that we all should look for a new place to live. I've just come to find out that the rest of them are renewing the lease and that I'm explicitly not allowed to sign the new contract. They're of the opinion that this changes nothing, because I was already looking for a place, even though I can barely afford the split rent as it is. Account 15. I had a friend of about 10 years and we were pretty close. Spent a lot of time together, partied, and talked about anything. He's notoriously flirty with our other friend's girlfriends. About five months ago, he was blatantly hitting on one of our other friend's girl, so I called him out about it. I was supremely drunk at the time, so I was being kind of an asshole toward him. I raged at him for being untrustworthy because of all of the times this has happened. This was not the first. For a while, there was bitterness between us. I apologized for being an asshole, but made it clear that my point still stands. Things got pretty much back to normal with us, but he'd been carrying around a chip on his shoulder. In the meantime, I started seeing a girl. It was nothing serious, but we were fornicating, so you could call her mine, at least as far as my friends are concerned. Then a little while ago, we got in a significant fight in a bar. I am usually a very happy drunk, swear. The whole time, he was talking to her about it, consoling her. The fight pretty much ended our potential for a future, which I was completely fine with. However, the very next day, douche friend was texting her all night while I was at work. She ended up inviting him out to a party. They left together and she stayed with him in his bed. I'd never been so fucking mad in my life.